All right, my favorite people, Sterling White here, back at it again with another topic for you. It is a beautiful day here in uh, Houston, 713 area code. 832 and 346 are all the area codes. I believe there's some other ones too, but don't want to go too far uh, off course. I have to use the restroom, so I'm going to have to crank this out pretty quickly, and the nearest bathroom is not very near. Uh, and this is going to be on a nine unit uh, that ended up uh, wholesaling uh, and just give you some insights on the biggest mistakes that was with this because I do target apartments between 75 to 160 uh, unit in Houston. I'll go a little bit lower on the, the unit count. Account, but this was a deal could not actually pass up so stay tuned all right so let's go ahead and jump into the the story and how the deal was found and how everything was actually uh, put together and it all started with a cold call direct to the owner and many of you know that this is the path that I've uh, uh, taken uh, and one you can either pull lists using certain databases there's prop stream there's Reonomy, there's CoStar there's list source there's tons that are out there you can take the driving for dollars approach which is another other way to get leads into your system uh, but through this one is ended up uh, pulling lists uh, and ended up it was owned in an LLC found out who filed the LLC and then got their contact information and gave them the outreach uh, and this was actually Maria uh, on the team who had the conversation with the owner and this is always key to hear certain motivations and triggers because if you make that first initial uh, contact and they say well, everything's for sale for the right price or give me an offer I can't refuse. Uh, in that case, it's, it's, not, it's likely not going to pencil out. But on this one is that uh, he just recently moved from uh, Indianapolis out to uh, Florida. I believe he's out there doing some parasailing right now as we speak. Uh, second is he was looking to retire. Uh, and then third was uh, he wanted out of the, the business too. And then uh, lastly is he he put, he put had his son that was managing the property and he was full time actually in the police force and just didn't have the time to manage the property. So a lot of pain points ended up still going up to the, the father uh, who was out in Florida. So she heard all of these uh, certain triggers, set the appointment with me. And then that's when I ended up uh, closing it to say, okay, the next steps is, uh, let's go ahead and do a tour of the property. Uh, so that was the next steps there and went out, gave a quick tour of the property, understood the uh, types of renovations and everything that needed to be had. And just going back to the initial conversation is that uh, he mentioned that the financials would be difficult for him to, to get because he was a mom and pop operator and he just was not properly uh, keeping up on that. And I said, that'll be fine. We at least would need to have uh, some financials. I premised that because this will actually come back to, to bite me at a later point. So end up uh, walking all the, the units, uh, taking pictures, uh, as well as video, because this deal was uh, too small for my uh, self personally. Uh, so uh, with that is just knew that was gonna end up wholesaling it uh, and uh, selling it to another investor. So getting under contract uh, and then having that margin in between between uh, of what was under contract for and then selling it to the end buyer at, so that spread that was in between that. Uh, and at this point in time, submitted the offer to the owner based upon those uh, renovations uh, and said that, okay, well, at this point, we actually need uh, your financials. That way we can actually uh, uh, reshore uh, where we're currently at. Uh, and he said that, yeah, I, I'm not able to provide any financials. And I said, I understand. Uh, can you provide some financials? He said, no. Uh, as I mentioned, I cannot provide any financials. I don't have anything. And myself, this was a mistake that I had made is that I, one, at the beginning, you always want to agree that, hey, I'll be able to make this deal go uh, through. But I did not realize when he said I cannot provide any financials or if I could do some that he was literally not able to provide any. So then at this point, is actually recountered, which is another way for retrading or renegotiating at uh, three hundred thousand dollars. Because uh, as just doing the uh, comps, it was anywhere between about three hundred and seventy-five to four hundred thousand of the the resale. Uh, so that's why I was actually looking to get uh, it lower. So originally it was uh, higher than that, but then I mentioned that hey. If we're not able to get the financials, this is where we're actually going to be at, which is $300,000. Uh, and at this point, 
he was livid uh, and said, hey, and this was the mistake that I ended up making is that uh, he said, I no longer want to work with you. Uh, I told you at the beginning I wasn't going to provide any uh, financials. Uh, and that was the, the case. Uh, he was not able to provide financials. So then this is where I ended up getting creative, got someone on the team to then reach out to them to essentially smooth out the edges. So didn't give up on the deal uh, and then ended up getting it under contract for $297,000. Uh, dollars. Uh, however, at this point, guess what happens? The pandemic comes up uh, right as everything happens and uh, uh, is got it under contract. Shout it out to the, the buyers at this point in time. And now everyone's walking through. Boom. Pandemic happens. Everything stops. Uh, because at this point, everyone is waiting to see uh, what what happens. Uh, and so just for several uh, months is there was very low traffic is yeah, very low traffic. Uh, and then I uh, end up fast forwarding uh, three about three to four months later, finally ended up uh, finding a, a buyer who was at four hundred thousand uh, dollars. And this is the key that I always say is that uh, why it's good to have uh, partnerships uh, is that myself is I like to focus on the finding deals and then partner with someone who already has the infrastructure of a buyer's list and they actually do all the marketing and do all the, the walkthroughs uh, with the buyers too and do all the negotiations. So that's why I really uh, value team and partnerships and this was a partnership uh, that was put together. Uh, so uh, it was several months later, got the buyer, they were at $400,000. And then at the end, they ended up recountering uh, and saying that, hey, this, this, and this needs to be done. Uh, so ended up selling it for $375,000. So that profit was uh, 70, the, the gross profit was $75,000. So that's how that deal was put together. But the mistake I want to mention is that uh, the first one is that uh, the retrading, which was renegotiating is just when he mentioned no financials, I should have dug a little bit deeper because <laughs> I did not know when he said no financials or little financials uh, that he was not going to be able to provide any because that's difficult from a financing standpoint. Lenders want to see how the property has has been performing uh, and then you can be able to underwrite how it's been performing of hey these are the water expenses this is the electricity electricity this is the gas all of that and then you can perform it out based upon that or you can see if something's a little bit out of line there was nothing that was really there he had very bits and pieces uh, but he wasn't tracking on a monthly basis what the expenses were uh, so there's that and then second is it takes the same amount of work to purchase a non-unit deal uh, that it does uh, a property that's over 100 units because I've done both. I've acquired an 80 unit, I've acquired a 156 unit. It literally does take the same amount of time. Uh, negotiation and the, the closing time frame was a little bit shorter on this, uh, but still the same amount of time to actually pull the list, do the outreach, uh, and then the multiple attempts to get in contact with the owner takes about the same time it does on the larger deal. So that's the other mistake, but it's not necessarily a mistake, but that's just one little gem that I want to provide to you. Uh, but it really just depends on where you're looking to go uh, in your journey. You may be wanting to to stick with the, the smaller deals and have more ownership, or you can go uh, larger and then have a smaller piece of a larger uh, pie. So that's what I have for you all. Uh, I and I'm going to start some sparring and boxing here soon. So uh, those of you who may uh, see me on a video, I know there's some people on the, the podcast is I may have a black and a black eye every now and then my lip may be a little bit busted uh, that hopefully that's not the, the case. I don't it, it shouldn't be. I'm. I'm actually confident it will not be because I go to the gym and practice a lot to avoid that. Uh, but someone may slip something in every now and then, but I got to keep working on my slips so I can avoid that. But uh, all right, that's all I have on that. I appreciate you all so much. Keep being awesome, making things happen out there. Everyone on here, uh, you're some movers and shakers and just always have belief and faith in yourself that yes, entrepreneurship or let's uh, say being in the industry can be tough uh, at times, but it's just constantly 
really uh, pushing because, uh, yeah, the, the only reason why you would not get to where you want to go is if you quit. Uh, and just think of if you're 70, 80 years old and you're think uh, and you're looking back uh, that many people, when they do look back, they think of all the things that they regretted versus what they did. So I'll tell you now that as long as you keep with it and have faith that you will get to where you want to go. So uh, and those of you who just want more insights on how to scale your business uh, to get from where you are to where you want to go, there's a link below to a strategy session. Until then, I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.